Black Adam finally turns Dwayne Johnson, almost a superhero in real life, into a DC character and gives us a story that, if nothing else, tries to differentiate itself from other comic book origin movies. But how does Black Adam stack up against its competition? In this video, I will do well to make a detailed review of the recently released The Rock's movie, Black Adam. Make sure you stick with me to the end of the video. Without any further delay, let's get into it. What sets Black Adam apart from its competition in my opinion? 15 years ago, Ago, it was announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be playing the long-awaited role of Black Adam on the big screen. Fast forward to 2022 and that day is upon us. I'm going to attempt to give you a spoiler-free rundown of this movie and boy oh boy am I dodging those spoilers like a hurtling car thrown by a raging superhero. From the get-go, it's obvious to fans and newbies alike that Black Adam is a wild ride. It's a very different story from anything we've seen before but still feels familiar. The scale of this film is is as big as, well, The Rock, really. We've seen so many superhero movies over the years that they've become a genre unto themselves. That is not necessarily bad, but for the viewer, at least to me, it causes a certain tolerance. It's getting harder and harder to surprise me on the big screen. Black Adam, a movie directed by Jaume Colette Serra and starring Dwayne Johnson, at least made an effort, and he looked like it's tough when it comes to an origin story. This exercise in deviating from the narrative that Marvel and DC have imposed on their respective universes made the movie more interesting, but sometimes contradictory. I will explain. But first of all, it is important to understand that I did not know the character of Black Adam. Therefore, I cannot say if the adaptation is true to the comics. What I do have clear is that the protagonist in the movie is my style of superhero. Adam is a guy who has no qualms about killing, and who doesn't distinguish between justice and revenge. And in a world of such starched characters, he is appreciated. He's not necessarily evil, either. Just because he flouts superhero morality doesn't make him one of the boys seven. Simply, he is carried away by some human feelings. He was only a couple of rungs below Peacemaker or the Suicide Squad. And here we find the first of those interesting points of Black Adam, treating the protagonist of him as a hero or a villain depending on the situation. Teth Adam, the original name of the protagonist, defended the use of violence on a few occasions. And the truth is that it's not bad for him. This is one of the contradictions I was talking about. The movie made it clear to us that violence doesn't solve any anything with a small mouth, while his protagonist slaughters the bad guys on duty with some pretty convincing results. The second point that I liked also raises an ethical dilemma. The whole movie is self-aware, which suits him pretty well, and this shines through in the introduction of a new group, the Justice Society of America, made up of Adam Smasher, Dr. Fate, Cyclone, and Hawkman. They are the standard bearers of order in the world, but at one point I wonder why they only appear in areas where there is a supervillain, even though their inhabitants live oppressed long before, in this case by a military corporation. It's a shame that it stays there, because it would have been great to see how the dilemma of whether the supers are there to protect the underdog, or just to maintain the established order, was resolved. Would it have put the sacred cows of the DC Universe in the spotlight? While these details are interesting, they don't get Black Adam out of the another superhero movie canon. Without leaving the margins, you can take out your list of topics to verify that Black Adam has all the essential elements of the genre. Black Adam gave us spectacular fight sequences that included the destruction of entire cities, small moments of humor, characters without power that showed that the important thing is faith, love, teamwork. In general, it is a nice movie, but it is not capable of surprising at any time, not even in the technical aspects, with an irregular montage that punished us, with some slow motion sequences that failed to be epic, and with an abuse of color grading, color corrections that give a particular tone to the image, not even the generosity of digital effects could take away that feeling of we've seen it all before. Against all odds to be a popcorn blockbuster, what was saved in Black Adam is the cast. Effectively, Dwayne The Rock Johnson took over the screen. He played as a villain, as a hero, and even in his comedic contributions. In addition to being the only human being who, to play a superhero, needs to have muscles removed through CGI, quite the opposite of Thor's character in Love and Thunder. The truth is that I wonder how no one had thought of signing him as a superhero before, because if anyone measures up, it's The Rock. But he's not the only one. Pierce Brosnan, former 007, goes on to enter the list of rescued old glories for superhero movies that Michael Douglas, Kevin Costner, Rene Russo, or Tommy Lee Jones have already passed through here. And the truth is that his role as Dr. Fate was very successful, and he left us with some of the few moments to remember. Of course, what adds the most value to the film, which has been a bit long for us, is the post credit scene. I am not going to reveal it, of course, but it's just 
just as promising as when we first saw Nick Fury talk about the Avengers Initiative. Is it worth going to the cinema to see Black Adam? I had low expectations, to be honest, and it turned out to be decent entertainment. It always stays within expectations. It's neither wild like Suicide Squad nor dense like The Batman. The Rock's Black Adam enriched the DC Universe with new characters and manages to give new nuances to a story that has been repeated ad nauseum. Listening to feedback from the audience as the movie finished at the Sydney premiere, many likened it to the iconic X-Men films, which can only be a good thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's evident that care and attention has been taken in the creation of this film to deliver to the fans exactly what they want. Big blow-ups, a decent yet different storyline, and some great performances from the supporting cast. Do yourself a favor and stay for the post credit scene. As always, this sets up what's to come in the DCU and it's going to be out of this world. It may have taken 5,000 years to have the Black Adam story told, but it's been so worth the wait. Next up, Dwayne The Rock Johnson stuns viewers with talk show performance. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is known to be one of Hollywood's highest paid actors, if not the highest of them all. But he has stunned viewers with another talent equally as impressive as his acting chops. The 50-year-old star showed off his vocal skills on Tuesday's episode of The Kelly Clarkson Show, performing a duet with the debut American Idol winner. During the Kelly Oak segment, the talk show host welcomed the former wrestler to the stage to duet Don't Come Home a Drinkin' by the late U.S. country singer Loretta Lynn, and fans couldn't believe his singing voice. The performance came two weeks after the famed country singer's death on October 4th at the age of 90, and Johnson's performance of her 1967 hit didn't come out of nowhere. He told Clarkson that he has long admired Lynn's music and, as a child, dreamt of being a country singer. I loved Loretta Lynn. I really did. I loved her growing up. Up, Johnson said. He shared that he grew up on traditional country music and lived in Nashville when he was 15 years old. At the time, Johnson would walk the streets singing country classics, like Hank Williams Jr.'s Old Habits, in the hopes of somebody discovering him as the next big talent. However, he said it didn't happen for me. Viewers were stunned by Johnson's vocals, with one commentator on YouTube writing that this is unexpected. He added that he didn't know Dwayne sang until now and loved his low voice that matches with Kelly's high notes. Another comment commentator tweeted that he would have never guessed The Rock could sing, but this isn't the first time Johnson has demonstrated his velvety vocals. Back in 2016, the actor showed off his talent as the cocky demigod Maui in Disney's animated musical Moana, in which Johnson performed the solo song, Yeah, You're Welcome. The catchy tune was released as a single and still manages to resurface on TikTok every now and then. That said, who knew he was a country boy? Let me know in the comment section. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider giving us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time.